Hi, everyone. Um, thank you all for taking time out of your days to come to my presentation. Um, I'm Mia Haga, and I'm currently a senior at Iolani School. For my research project, I looked at the community composition and susceptibility of necrotic root canal bacteria to various endodontic irrigants and antibiotics. My interest in endodontics stems from my family's endodontic practice. My grandfather was the first practicing endodontist in Hawaii and founded Endodontic Associates in 1966. Following in his footsteps, my dad and two cousins now run the practice. While working there this summer, I was inspired to research the bacteria that keeps patients walking through our doors. So the first question you may be asking is, what is a root canal and root canal irrigant? Every year, more than 50 million people get a root canal. People of all ages and backgrounds experience the specialized procedure every day. A root canal procedure eliminates bacteria from infected canals, prevents reinfection, and saves the natural tooth from extraction. A root canal irrigant, also known as a chemical irrigant, is used to kill any leftover bacteria inside the canal to prevent further infection. This image shows the anatomy of an infected tooth. Here you can see two different roots one with infected pulp tissue and the other with inflamed pulp tissue. This is a tooth in need of a root canal. My research question is, what types of bacteria are present in root canals and are they susceptible to hypochlorous acid and antibiotics as endodontic irrigants? Unlike other studies, this study focuses on looking at communities of bacteria that lie inside the canals and their resistance to sodium hypochlorite, hypochlorous acid, CPC, and antibiotics. Background information is necessary to understand my project. So this image lays out the root canal procedure. One is the initial tooth that has been infected. Two shows the opening that is drilled through the top of the tooth. Three shows the shaping of the canals using endodontic files, which gets rid of the infected pulp. And after the pulp is removed, an irrigant is flushed in the canal and kills any of the leftover bacteria. Four shows the gutta percha being put into the canal, while steps five and six are normally done after one gets a root canal by a general dentist. The American Association of Endodontics says an ideal irrigant should be able to clean and disinfect the root canal system, penetrate dentin, offer long-term antibacterial effect, remove the smear layer, and be non-antigenic, non-toxic, and non-carcinogenic. The current irrigants being used by endodontists are not ideal. Some of the most popular irrigants are either hazardous or very ineffectiveness. Sodium hypochlorite, also referred to as household bleach, is the most commonly used irrigant. This irrigant dissolves organic substances, but is cytotoxic if injected in periridicular tissues. One of the dangers of using sodium hypochlorite is sodium hypochlorite accidents, which is the extrusion of the solution from the apical foramen into the periapical area of the tooth. Since sodium hypochlorite is considered to be cytotoxic, when the solution interacts with the tissue, it can cause severe inflammation and cellular destruction in all tissues. So why hypochlorous acid? Unlike sodium hypochlorite, hypochlorous acid has yet to be fully investigated in the dental field. If sodium hypochlorite is combined with water, hypochlorous acid forms. Hypochlorous acid contains active chlorine, which exerts its antibacterial effect due to the oxidation of SH groups and of essential enzymes. This oxidation disrupts the metabolic functions of the bacteria cell. Further, chlorine can also mix with the cytoplasmic components to form n chloro compounds, which destroy the microorganism. Made up of sodium chloride, hypochlorous acid, and water in the amounts present, hypochlorous acid is classified as a non-hazardous chemical. The Kirby-Bauer disc diffusion susceptibility test was used to determine the resistance of aerobic and anaerobic bacteria to antimicrobial compounds. The sample was first plated on agar. Antimicrobial filter paper discs were then distributed evenly across the surface of the agar. The presence or absence of growth around the paper disc showed the susceptibility of the organism, also called the zone of inhibition. In my experiment, I tested endodontic irrigant and antibiotic paper discs. This is an example of one of my plates irrigated with antibiotics. Since there is no clear area around the paper disc on the left, there is no zone. The clear area around the paper disc on the right is a zone. Retreatment, also known as root canal failure, is when the canal is reinfected by bacteria that was not initially cleaned out the first time. Retreatment should be prevented through the use of an infective irrigant. 
in order to decrease retreatment rates, an irrigant that is able to effectively kill the bacteria is necessary. This leads to my first experimental goal, which was to determine the susceptibility of the communities of bacteria to hypochlorous acid and antibiotics as endodontic irrigants. For my methods, an endodontist did the initial procedures to prep the canal for sampling. Once the canal was prepped, a canal was selected for sampling. Paper points were used to sample the root canal bacteria. The paper point was left in the canal for one minute before being transferred to a brain heart infusion broth tube. The tubes are missed were then shaken thoroughly in a vortex mixer to ensure that the medium was completely mixed. Once shaken, the tubes were incubated in an anaerobic environment for four days. After incubation, the broth turbidity determined the amount of remaining bacteria in the tube. The medium was plated on anaerobe agar with 5% defibrillate sheep's blood with additions of hemin and vitamin K. Once the medium was plated, paper discs were used to irrigate the testing solutions. Each solution was irrigated onto paper discs, one with sodium hypochlorite and another with hypochlorous acid. I also chose to use both LB and Brucella agar to test the antibiotics in sodium hypochlorite. The agar plates were incubated anaerobically at 37 degrees Celsius for one day with a desiccant bag to reduce condensation. After incubation, the diameter of the zones of bacterial inhibition were measured using a transparent ruler and recorded. A total of 103 trials were performed and analyzed. Table one shows the number of trials that were performed for each irrigant tested at various concentrations. A total of 46 trials were performed using sodium hypochlorite, CPC, hypochlorous acid, and water as my control. However, in these trials, no zones of inhibition were shown. Therefore, the irrigants were not effective in inhibiting the bacteria from growing. Table two shows the number of trials that were performed for each antibiotic. A total of 57 trials were performed using two sets of antibiotics. When antibiotics were used as irrigants, both clear and faint zones were shown, but this varied from sample to sample. Since I tested a community of bacteria, the faintness of the zone could be because the antibiotic was able to kill some species creating the ring. However, the remaining species remain on the ring, making it not as visible. I was able to accomplish my first goal by concluding that communities of bacteria were not susceptible to any irrigants, but showed some susceptibility to antibiotics. A possibility is that this occurred due to the different species in each bacterial community, which led to my next experimental goal. My second goal was to identify the types of bacteria within the samples taken. I was able to identify the bacteria by using the 16S gene. Using the samples, I was able to extract DNA for sequencing and use it as a template for PCR to amplify the 16S gene. I used machinery in a gel stool extraction kit and followed the instructions resulting in the eluded DNA. For 16S rRNA sequencing, we used MinNo software to collect the raw data from the device and convert it into base called reads. Epitome software provided base called data such as genome, barcoding, and taxonomic classification. I used the 16S barcoding kit 124 and followed the instructions. The sequencing device we used was the min ion flongo flow cell. My bacterial identification results go to show the difference in the bacterial community within different patients. Here are tables taken from Epitome software for samples one and two. These numbers represent the number of reads or pieces of DNA from a specific species in my samples. Sample 1 was dominated by Delphidia lacustris, while sample 2 was dominated by Enterobacter and Villanella. Samples 3 and 4 were both dominated by Enterococcus facialis, which is known to be highly resistant and associated with retreatment cases due to its high ability to survive. Future research could be to pre-sample patients' bacteria in order to determine which course of treatment to use. If they were to identify Enterococcus basalis, which is associated with retreatment cases, the use of a specific antibiotic would decrease the retreatment rate. Another change could be to increase the sample size by sampling more people's bacteria. An increase in samples would broaden the diversity in the bacterial species identified. Since this study analyzes communities of bacteria, I could study the effect of these irrigants and antibiotics on a species level. In conclusion, I could concur that the genus we identified were dominated by species known to be resistant to antibiotics and irrigants. This makes my experiments valid because the bacteria was not killed by the irrigants. 
However, it should be noted that since we are testing the bacteria in large colonies, the amount of bacteria to irrigant ratio is a lot greater in this experiment than inside a root canal. Due to the amount of highly resistant bacteria in the samples, very few clear zones of inhibition were shown. These results have changed my perception of the root canal procedure. Like anyone else, I thought that household bleach would kill everything. Now that I know that is not the case, I now understand the importance of mechanically shaping the canal using rotary files and irrigating the shaped canals. If I had to give advice to future research students, I would first say that this is a once in a lifetime experience. Therefore, you should totally take advantage of this awesome opportunity. When I first signed up for research, I was not really sure what to expect. I remember being uneasy going into this class, but with the guidance of Dr. Chan, I was able to go step-by-step step through the research process. I would also say not to give up, which sounds super cliche, but you are going to run into problems, whether it is a procedure, material, or result. This class teaches you to persevere and pushes you to work through these problems and find a solution. After plating bacteria and paper discs for lunch, two periods, and after school, I would find no zones of inhibition on my plates. Although this was discouraging, I kept going and looked for new alternatives like CPC and antibiotics, which ended up being more effective. After weeks of trial and error, I finally got a result. I showed Dr. Chan the successful plate and we rejoiced with jumps and laughter. It is moments like these that I would cherish forever. I would first like to thank Dr. Chan, my mentor, for being there every step of the way, whether that meant her coming with me to UH, going in on weekends, and teaching me how to plate bacteria. Second, I would like to thank Enodontic Associates for letting me collect bacteria at the practice and for making the collection process so easy. I would also like to thank my family, friends, and teachers for constantly supporting me in everything I do. Lastly, I would like to thank Iolani School for giving me this incredible opportunity to do high school research. These are my references. Thank you, everyone.